there have been a lot of amazing releases in 2021, but there is one that sticks out when we consider value for money and performance. The most we are talking about is of course the Pulsar X Lite Wireless, so let's take a look at what you can get for the price of 75 bucks, and we'll also talk about the glass superglide feed that they have come up with. The X-Lite itself is an OEM shape that's something in between the EC2 and the EC1, so just by the shape it's nothing innovative or anything that exciting. But when you combine that with the quality of the features that's packed into the mouse, things start to get interesting. Let's begin with the feet and these are PTFE and the glide is good with pretty much any kind of surface. When I was testing the Rocket Jump Ninja mousepad or the x GPC-1, I noticed that the X-Lite Wireless is the only large mouse that I want to or can use with the mousepad. As I did struggle with most large mice like for example the Rocket Control Air and even the Vaxi Outset AX. The reason why I was able to use the X-Lite Wireless so well is partly because of the feet and partly because it's so lightweight, especially for this size. Pulsar did change the game in terms of how you can get rid of some extra weight so they got rid of pretty much the whole bottom plate. I don't really consider low weight to be extremely important in a mouse, but in terms of the X-Lite it definitely works. I think that large mice do not need to be very lightweight, but then again when we do have a large mouse that's lightweight, we have some benefits and there are basically no downsides. As an example, when you get your first small lightweight mouse, you will lack some control because of how small and how lightweight the mouse is. But because the X-Lite is so large, you do not lose as much control. It's about 60 grams and in my opinion it's fairly well balanced, it's a little bit front heavy but nothing that would absolutely bother me in game. Other than the weight, the build quality is also exceptional, there is no shell flex, there is no rattle and there is pretty much no creaking. It does creak when you use a lot of force but nothing that would actually happen in real use. The whole mouse is covered with these line like holes or whatever you would call them, but they do not bother me as much as honeycomb holes usually do. There is absolutely zero side play on either one of the buttons, but there is some pre-travel depending on where you click the button from, and also some post-travel but nothing that would bother you in game. The buttons are overall very light and easy to actuate, and the switches are the KLGM 8.0s and surprisingly to me these are actually not that crispy and tactile as they usually are. So these do not feel that premium, but in terms of functionality I would say that these are great. The side buttons have some pre-travel but they are crispy and tactile and they are actually quite heavy. They feel good for games and overall use. They are also well placed for my grip style and hand size. Moving on to performance of the mouse and that's actually the most amazing part as the wireless implementation for 75 bucks is absolutely flawless. There is no perceivable motion delay and the implementation seems to be exactly the same as on the extra 5 m wireless and the Hardy Ace wireless for example. The click latency is also very low and that combined with the light and ease to actuate buttons means that these clicks are extremely responsive. Battery life is also fairly good as the mouse lasts about 5 days with heavy use and it has USB-C for that fairly fast charging as well. As I said earlier, it's an easy to clone but in terms of hand feel it's actually not that similar at all. The X-Lite wireless shape is somewhere between the EC1 and the EC2 but you can't really call it an EC1.5 either. It's high profile at 42mm but luckily not super long at 122mm so it doesn't feel massive by any means for my 19x10 Hands. It's very wide at 66 millimeters, and in terms of that, it's more like the outset than the EC2. And actually, overall, the hand feeling is way more like the outset AX than it is like the EC2. But this being an OEM shape, it just feels way less finalized and polished as the Outset AX. The side curvature is actually fairly similar, but the Outset AX just has way more hump, and it's far better for tilt grip, pinch air claw, and for small and medium hands, I would also say that for palm grip. Overall, the Outset AX has one of the best designs on an asymmetrical mouse I've ever seen, so I'm not going to cry too much about the fact that the X-Lite shape is worse than the Outset AX. But back to the mouse at hand, it's a good shape for relaxed claw and aggressive claw, and for palm grip as well on medium and large hands. But you might feel that it's too large if your hands are quite thin because it is so wide. The shape works great for me personally and it's a great match for the style of claw that I've had for the past two months. It's comfortable to have my palm rest on top of the mouse and my fingers are quite far up front. I'm also aiming very well with it in game especially for attack FPS. If you are in Europe, you can get the mouse from Max Gaming for about 75 to 80 euros, and at the time of filming this video, the mouse is actually available for 65 euros, so that's insane. And quickly, my initial thoughts about the glass mouse feet. So these are much faster than any PTFE feet that I've tried, and that is mainly because there is zero, and I mean zero, static friction. It doesn't even matter what mousepad you're using, even with the GPC-1 or the Rocket Jump Ninja mousepad, 
there is pretty much no static friction whatsoever. Way less than with any PTFE feet. The Super Glide feet do retain some stopping power, but still of course again less than with PTFE feet. Whatever the game, when you play it competitively and against very good players, you want to have at least some static friction for those situations where something unexpected happens. And also especially for those days when you're feeling off with your aim. Everybody has off days and having something like this on an off day will most likely mean that you're not going to hit a barn door. Any kind of feedback is also very important for precision, be it in terms of friction or roughness from the mousepad. And at least these super glide mouse feet do not have any feedback whatsoever. So even something like the Artisan High End will feel fairly smooth. I aim well with these and the lack of static friction can be nice for those micro adjustments, but then again I could get something like the Endgame Gear MPC 450 and still have some feedback and low static friction for those good micro adjustments. So I just do not see the point of these. But I will use these feet more to get used to them and I will give you guys my opinion later. Nothing more really to say, it's the best budget mouse of the year. Huge shout out to Pulsar, they did really improve from the first wide model they had. And now we get an insanely well performing mouse at 75 bucks. Check this video right here for the three mice that I aim the best with at the moment and this one right here for some information about my new main grip style. That's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video hit the like button. If you enjoy my content hit that subscribe button and see you in the next one.